Hi everyone, welcome to the Mad Witch channel. Thank you for popping by. It is freezing here and I refuse point blank to put the heating on so I have got a hot water bottle, I've got my shawl, I've got my fingerless gloves, I've got my Uggs and I probably look, yeah, I'll be snivelling, it's so cold. Um, anyway, I, I watched Nomqua do her Tradwitch tag video and I said, oh, I really want to do this. I really want to do this. And then I kind of got imposter syndrome um, and also feelings of inadequacy. And that was, I, I mean, um, that was quite hard because I've been watching other people's videos and there's a lot of youngsters doing them. I say youngsters, anyone under 45 is a youngster to me, really. But um they're so on it they're so on point they are so they've been practicing you know all through their young lives whatever and they they kind of cover it they cover a lot of stuff and they do it really well these videos um that they've been putting up are really informative really meaty and have good advice and i'm like well i don't really know what i can add to this um but a couple of people had said to me you're going to do it and i i kind of i wanted to because i think it's really nice to have to support each other um and to share good practice and you get ideas you know from other people listening to other people and um one of the things that i felt i could perhaps touch on in my in my you know answers and and my practice generally is that um as an older witch there are quite a few of us crones out there and not all of us have been practicing under the the title of witch for the longest time and I kind of, this is kind of a subject I, I almost wanted to do a separate video on, and maybe I will do eventually, but I'm not sure how, how, what, what I can say other than what I'm about to say, is that um, there are so, the, the witchcraft community I think is, is huge now, far bigger than perhaps we, re, we realise or outsiders realise. And they come from all walks of life. And there is a huge uh, percentage that are youngsters, which is lovely. Um, for the older witches, there is almost a sense of coming out of hibernation. I know that there are a few that I've spoken to in the past who said to me, you know, that they're older and therefore they sometimes struggle to find that sort of niche for themselves, not in their practice so much, but just in the fact that, you know, um, if you're watching a lot of youngsters, it, it can, you might feel like I sometimes feel very old. <laughs> but the, for the older generation who are like that, like myself, it's almost an awakening. It's a little bit like you've been in hibernation or you haven't been a, aware of, of, of what you're doing as being part of witchcraft i think that there is an awakening for witches because there's a need um it, it isn't just about um experienced seasoned witches but it's a it's also about bringing as many people who honor the earth and the natural ways to in into that consciousness as possible so that's kind of where I'm at and why I'm, I'm going to try and and do this tag even though I, I think the youngsters the ones that I've watched these are seasoned witches I say youngsters but the, I mean these are these are are people who who take their practice very seriously and they have been doing it since they were very young so the first question is what kind of craft do you practice folk magic 
traditional witchcraft, Wicca, modern witchcraft, ceremonial, magic, eclectic and occultism. So first of all, I need to say that this is probably going to be quite a long video because it, this is not something you can power through quickly. Um, and I'm going to try and touch on everything, but I might merge a few. I'm not sure yet. Um, so there are a lot of labels. Not everyone likes labels and I get that. But um, I think in some respects, it's quite comfortable. It's quite good that we can bring all of those different types of craft together um, because we're very um, comfortable really around other, other witches practice and very encompassing, I think, generally. So I would call, I would say that my practice is folk traditional. Um, I think that I went very early on in my practice I felt that I couldn't follow the Wiccan path and that's not because I think Wiccan doesn't have its place I think Wicca is or certainly was when it was created by Gerald Gardner a, a really valuable tool of a, a practice because it brought lots of traditional stuff together I'm not saying that uh, that witchcraft itself had died out. I think it was still very much there under the surface, quietly doing its own thing um, and not worrying if, you know, people knew about it or not. Because I think a lot of traditional folk witchcraft is like that anyway. But I think he definitely did um, rejuvenate the, uh, the world into the importance of witchcraft. So I think it has its place. And I think a lot of youngsters might well start on the path of Wicca and then move on. So I knew quite quickly that that wasn't for me at all. Um, I'm not part of a coven. I'm, I'm a solitary witch. And my practice is quite mundane in, in, in a lot of ways. Um, and I think that's fine. I think that the lovely part about being a, a part of the witchcraft community is you you know especially as older ones we could kind of sit in the background let the youngsters do you know that some of that more ritual magic perhaps or that more high magic if they want not to say that you can't if you're older but my craft isn't isn't like that so i feel that i have a place but i i think there is enough scope for everything in there um i am eclectic i do take from other practices if something I think oh that sounds really good I can do that um, the second question is what paradigm paradigm I can't say the word paradigm faith or philosophy informs your craft i.e spirit model animism neoplatism psychological approach energy model polytheism well I was listening to George Hares and I thought he had a lot of really good things to say. Also, uh, Saturnarium. I haven't watched a few or the others. I have watched Rachel's, uh, who is a, a lovely witch and has been practicing a long time. And uh, all of these lovely channels um, and, and others, I can't name them all, but there are quite a few out there who are doing this tag. Um, my lovely young friend from Cosmic Creepers, um, did it and she's you know, she's a youngster she's been practicing a long time and she's very knowledgeable but you know that's just to name a few I would say that I have animism and pantheon in my practice I was uh, <laughs> I was watching Star Wars because uh, I like I like sci-fi my, my husband and I were watching Star Wars and I said to him, it's weird, isn't it? When you think about these old films, you know, they're talking about the galaxies and they're talking about, you know, and you obviously it's fiction, but, you know, you think about the, the space between the worlds in just one galaxy. Um, and when I was very young, we, that was all we knew that there was, we were part of this galaxy we did not know then that there were millions of billions of galaxies with billions of stars in this universe and it's mind-blowing and then weirdly enough that very kind of same day 
I was reading the Mark Ryan uh, Wild Magic. If I turn it around, it's going to be around the wrong way anyway. Um, and there's this whole section that, that Mark Ryan writes about in here. I'm pretty sure it's Mark that writes it. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Um, and he talks about um, uh, the study, NASA's study, and the study of um, space and scientific challenges um, and how the the science world and it, working with tarot or you know the spiritual world of witchcraft you know there, there are so many things now that the scientists are starting to find out are real when they've been practiced by cultures for for many uh, hundreds of years but it was interesting I can't remember where I read it now because it kind of sort of blew my mind but you know that there is this thought process in the scientific world that our universe and um, another universe collided very very early on and that there are you know I don't know whether it's billions but that there's certainly multiple universes and so there are finding that there are particles I'm not a scientist. I could be making all the wrong words fit here, but the, the the thought process is that they found particles that don't work in our universe, which gives them to believe that we collided with another universe. So not only are we colliding with other galaxies, but we're also collide we've collided with a another a, another universe as well, which I think is fantastic. And I think that you know when you really stop and think about how incredibly vast our galaxy is and then add on to that the sheer uh, space between the galaxies and and the, just the whole it blows your mind how big and how vast it is and how tiny how ridiculously tiny we are how tiny our planet is therefore how tiny we are in this gigantic I don't know there's words for it universe it's mind-blowing and I can remember as a little girl I used to be I I, I was stood in Sainsbury's and I, I was trying to imagine you know what came first I was quite small I don't know where that came from and I was just breaking my mind I was having a my headache just trying to imagine how it all began, not just with the Big Bang, but just how did everything just suddenly become something. So I, I think that as a species, we are quite limiting in how we view things. And Christianity, in my opinion, does have a limit. It, it, it feels almost medieval a little bit, really. But, you know, sort of because we're putting so much human into that story or that belief witchcraft has an ability to break those barriers and to open us up to the whole the bigger picture whether we understand it or not whether we could ever understand it it would probably destroy us if we if we had that ability so i would say that i believe that every every living thing everything has a spark an energy it has to have because everything literally whether it is an inanimate object or not is made up of the universe therefore it has a vibration it has to have um and everything therefore is is connected everything is not a lie the lives a wrong word but but it exists in in this physical plane whatever and it has a vibration therefore who's to say what kind of energy what kind of consciousness what kind of uh, being we, we we judge everything by our limited knowledge and i think that's wrong i think that we don't know we don't know how a rock thinks or how it feels just because we see this 
rock and we don't think it's got any um, ability to think. How do, how do we really know? For example, we don't know what in another galaxy is deemed as life. I, I just, I, I mean, I, what do I know? I'm, I'm not a scientist. I'm, I'm not a huge, I'm not intelligent. I just, I think that we're very limiting. We, we judge everything by the framework of humanity and I don't think that's the right way to do it. So I would say that I'm an eclectic witch. I mean, we have all these labels, earth witch, green witch, um, eclectic witch, solitary witch. There's, there's lots of different practices. But fundamentally, I think most witches, most because it's to me, it's not a religion. I think they say Wicca is a bit of a religion. I'm not I'm not sure about that. I don't know. Mine is a life practice. It's 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 all encompassing. And I think that's absolutely why I love it so much. And it, it's, you know, it, it doesn't have. A beginning and an end it's everything and I, I know Saturnarian spoke about this when she said and I completely agree because I've said it before as well it's everything it's whether you're washing up whether you're gardening whether you're sewing whether you're doing your practice as in pulling your cards or whatever routine practice you might have um, making a cup of coffee in the morning doing the washing that the, the, there is no, uh, there is no part of, of it that isn't incorporated in that. So question number three is what culture is your practice rooted in? Um, I didn't start my practice through others, if you like, uh, um, through being part of a, a family or, or anything that already practiced. So my development when I and I because I had to start this video again I can't remember if I've already said this so my apologies if I have um, but when I first started it was like all on the table I wanted to learn everything so now my practice and this kind of um, kind of will sort of meld into the this the fourth question which is how long have you been practicing and how did it all start <coughs> Because I wanted to follow a more traditional path um, and I don't have a, a coven to rely on, um, I would say that what I looked to do, what I did was I wanted, I wanted to know it all and I, that's crazy, you can't do that. And over the years that I've been doing this, you, you have to suck it and see, <clears throat> you have to try. You have to dip your toe. You have to give all sorts of different things a try before you can find what works for you. <clears throat> and one of the things that I have been coming to realise is the focus of my craft has strongly been sort of, it, it's almost like it explodes, you know, whoa, everything's out there. And then it kind of condenses into this little star, I suppose, like the universe. You know, it's just there I am pulling it all in and it's kind of become its own little orbit of of whatever. Um, and it has become a very earth based practice. My practice is rooted in the English traditions into the earth in which I and residing which is in England and um, although I and working with the animals I, I you know I have a resident fox who loves to come and have breakfast with me and dinner um, and then he just disappears off into do his own thing whatever foxes do um, so it's working with the the, the animals the the insects, the, the wildlife, the, the plants that are culturally in my back garden, the trees. I don't mind incorporating other animals from other countries and, and plants and, and what have you, but predominantly I would like to, to be much more familiar with my own before I, you know, or, or, or 
just the concentration of it is is in that i i've been doing a lot of what i'd actually do all my life i don't do really high magic i don't do a lot of ritual work um i think that there are plenty of witches who who cover that i cover the garden the earth I love the the uh, what I'm I'm kind of bringing into my practice now is that merging of um, plants and planets, which I really like. Uh, so then using it in in your culinary work. Um, I came. I've said this so many times, which is another reason why I don't kind of want to repeat myself. But I came into my witchcraft through tarot. Um, having the very small concept of what I thought witchcraft was and thinking I'm never that's not for me and then finding out it absolutely was for me and never say never because you never know what's going to happen um, so I started through the back door and although I still do and I know I've heard Candy say that she suffers from imposter syndrome the thing about witchcraft is it isn't just one thing so my practice is very very nature-based there isn't you know I don't wiggle my nose and the housework gets done for me um, I've tried there are some really seriously intense magician is it the right word magicians practitioners of the of the magic the craft uh, out there and they they will do a lot more than i probably do i do spell work for for the home and garden um i would lend my myself to working with witches where we are where there's that need to become a, a more to put the energies of peace out there to 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 bring people into into the natural world again the digital age is is just is is not helping it you know we we need to focus on nature because we're part of it and there's this crazy world out there that, that that's spinning too fast for me um so what books and resources have you first started with and what would you recommend for others uh today so i have a pile of of books here and like Saturnarium, um, and interesting enough, I think I haven't heard, funny enough, many, I haven't yet found many that are talking about modern, modern books. I would say that early on, if you don't know what your practice, because your practice is going to change, even if you know early on what it's going to be, because it will, it's healthy that it would change. Um, I would say read some of the older books because although some of them will be dated and that is true um there there's more substance to them i do have a bit of a problem as well i have loads of modern books because like everybody else probably or a lot of witches i wanted to get the books i wanted to read it across the board blah, 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 you know but i realized that the more i was reading the more i felt that they were it's a bit like Chinese whispers. Everything's getting regurgitated down the line. Some of this stuff is uh, being churned out over and over again. It, it's it's not helpful. It doesn't um, it doesn't work just to regurgitate the old stuff. The old stuff is uh, that's not to say that's all the books, but it's very difficult. There are so many books out there now, and there are so many recommendations. It is, it's crazy, it's gone mad. So my books that I would say work for me would be The Culpepper is an old one. 
the herbal magic by what's his name Beryl but is it Beryl no uh, Mrs G's modern herbal then we've got some planetary books and all the you know the old the books that that write about the history of traditional witchcraft um, or witchcraft in a certain area and I'm still collecting those um, everybody's mentioned this that I know of folk witchcraft by Roger J Horn I picked it up because again it's gonna be back to front so there's not really much point in me waving it around in your face face but um, this was recommended by quite a few channels and I got it when I watched uh, tea from Cosmic Creepers and it is actually really lovely some of the older practitioners I'm not saying the new ones don't have something to say but I think there is such a choice out there of what to read it's probably worth starting with some of the olders um, I've got a couple of books on British witchcraft um, I haven't even read all of them I think um, Gemma Gary, the I got the Black Toad. There's a couple of Gemma Gary books that are worth reading, and I also think that Marion Green is another one who is is really lovely. I I do like her work, and the one the one set of books that I don't have and I really need to get is some. Um, oh, I'm hoping I'm going to put the right name in here. Ronald Hutton I think it's Ronald Hutton um, because I think his books are probably really worth a read um, so if you're new and you don't know where to start there's nothing wrong with having a Wiccan book in your collection um, look at your local witchcraft books if you can find any if you like plants or astrology, maybe focus in one area and build out as you go. It's it's often layering your knowledge up. Um, so I kind of exploded out, got all these books, none of none of which I wouldn't want in my collection. Well, maybe a, maybe there's a couple that I would think oh, I wouldn't necessarily go with those. Um, but there's you've. The more you read, the more bits of information will stick and then you kind of bring it all together, a bit like a cake, and uh, it goes from there. So, you know, I think the older books have their place, but some of them are dated. So it is it is a bit of who recommends what. And if there's a few witches that you really like their practice, what are their recommendations? go with some of theirs i mean i've got another couple in here i mean i've got loads of books in here but i also like raven grimacy um but i i started his books and realized that i kind of wanted to um to have time to do that what he was suggesting um with somebody else actually my friend merlin sent me a book and i've forgotten his name completely now He's sitting, there's a pile by my, my bed of half-read books. But I think that definitely start with the older ones. Maybe get one good herbal book, one good astrology book. See who are the sort of authors that have been around a long time. And not everybody likes the same stuff. And not everybody wants to read the same stuff. So just, just bear that in mind. Um, how is your practice changed over the years well it, it definitely changes because like I said it, it kind of exploded out and now it's really being tucked in at the edges it's very it's become very earth centered so and I, I know there's quite a few witches that are like this um, it's very plant based but like I said I'm trying at the moment to bring in the astrology the plant side of it or the planet side of it with the plants so that's really where i'm focusing my knowledge at the moment and just working with what i've got in the garden reading the books over the winter that i have 
not finished um and like i say it it's changed because i've narrowed it right down and you sometimes you've got to try things i'm really on the fence with the cabalistic side of it which is thoth based i love thoth in my practice which is is you know the alistair crowley tarot based on the kind of tree of life Kabbalah system I like the tree of life um, my my immediate ancestry is shamanic so there's definitely you know bits of traditional folk that I would want to incorporate still that I'm still learning and the learning is the biggest I, I, I think I heard a witch say recently, you know, just get your head in the books and read. And I think there's truth that, yeah, you do have to also put stuff into practice. But if you're in it for the long haul, if, it, if it's, for me, I cannot absorb enough. I cannot read enough. I want to know it all. Not because I'll use it all, but because it's just fascinating in, in its, it's just infinite really. I'm waffling. Let's come back to where we are on the questions. What does your daily regular practice look like? What do you do on a regular basis? Um, the most regular part of my practice is the moon cycles. Now that's really another part of the, the, the evolution. I'm trying to bring in working with my plants with the planets with the moon so uh, I was watching Jessica and the moon and she was saying that she was ch sort of changing up her the way she journaled to be more in in line with the, the moon cycle rather than maybe monthly and I love that and I thought that's actually a really nice practice I think I'd like to incorporate that so rather than me pulling all my oracle cards that you can see behind me uh, in December I would do them I should have done them I didn't do them because I haven't started yet but at the new moon so I do, I'm I and I I've listened to Jessica talk about the dark moon and the new moon um at all but I still do practice my um devotions to Hecate for the dark moon and that's really kind of the only thing I do with the dark moon uh, is is my practice with Hecate and the new moon I can pull all my cards and then the full moon I work with Isis so I have them although the goddess for me is not named and I've done a video on this um and I know it it's I'm still holding on to these names a little bit where I I kind of shouldn't be um and circumstances are unfolding that will mean that the goddess gets what she wants from me in that she does not want those names to be the, the the main part of my practice but i i can't give them up because i started them and now i kind of feel that you know they're part of of what i do because i love ancient egypt and i love the the whole greek um mythology as well that it's um i like the elements of working with deity I believe the goddess is, is, is the goddess and all the different names of her are just the different aspects of wherever they've come from geographically or the, uh, of the time. So I, I get that. They're just aspects of her. Um, but the goddess, uh, that again has evolved. So I've, I've gone from maybe individual deity to one all-encompassing, just unnamed goddess. Um, so that's kind of evolved and that's part of my practice, but I do flip to the moons to utilize those two deities. And, um, my routine as such is I will always start my morning stirring in my intentions to my coffee. I pull certain cards. I pull a card from my star tarot to represent the goddess message for the day. And they've been very powerful, strong um 
messages every day. I've now incorporated the wildwood because I'm working through the year with that deck. I don't sadly have a year in the wildwood book. It's on Amazon as a paperback for £17, which I think is expensive. To be fair, I'm sorry, I do. I know it's on Kindle, but I'm not the best with Kindle. So I'm not sure whether I'll be able to actually get that. Uh, I would have liked to have worked with it. I think, it, I think, now I could be completely wrong. I think her name is Alison Cross and it's John Matthews. And I'm, I, I just... I just felt £17 was a lot for me to pay. It probably isn't for other people, but I just, you know, I couldn't I couldn't justify it right this moment. Um, so I will just pull a card and work with that. And then at the moment, I've got the Llewellyn as the sort of the, th the, the third one. So the goddess kind of is like the, the, the top, the branch, the sort of message from you know, that, that higher realm, the trunk, the tree, the sort of traveling is the um, wildwood. And then the kind of mundane everyday sort of stuff is the Llewellyn. Um, I may, I like to pull cards weekly, monthly. Sometimes I like to do more spreads. I don't, my practice has been a bit tarot focused actually lately. Um, I haven't done a lot of witching but I do witch in my sewing so I, I'm doing a lot of sewing projects that are gifts for Christmas and obviously those are magical intent that you're putting into into what you're creating I don't know if any of this answers any of the questions um, so regularly that's what I do but not I'm not good with regular I'm very spontaneous and when I'm made to do stuff structurally I get I don't I don't perform well I'm just a bit of a a rebel in that regard uh, are there aspects of your craft that you need to keep secret in your opinion is secrecy important in witchcraft that's a double-sided answer for me yes i think that when you're doing spellcraft you the power lies within you and the elements that you're working with and i i think like many witches will say that they won't necessarily share that um at the time maybe afterwards when you finished and the spell is complete and done with and you could then share good practice i don't think there's anything wrong with that i i i hope and look forward to more and more witches being able to come out the broom closet closet i think um as a body of 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 people i think we have a voice that is hugely prevalent in this day and age it is the witches who will draw people back to nature to working with the cycles the seasons with the um, respect for animals and insects and the way we practice um, you know the use of pesticides the use of plastics um, it, it's almost as if the the world needs to listen to the witches who understand how dangerous these things are to our planet and how our planet is so very important to us and we we're doing a lot of damage so when we talk about space travel and going off into the galaxy as much as I'd love to know about space and want to see you know these amazing things humanity is so destructive and we've already sent most ru uh, rubbish into the universe already i don't want us to destroy anything else it's bad enough what we're doing to our planet and it is the com coming together of witches i really do believe are the people 
who can make a difference. You know, okay, we've got all these global companies and these very rich people who are making a lot of money through the digital world and it, it is making things very top heavy. Um, witches who work with the earth growing things or use their magic to uh, help to align and balance energies in nature or heal the planet um, wherever you are you are so important and those who can't come out because there will be lots that will would be very victimized by others um, hopefully that will the balance will tip so i think sadly some people do have unfortunately to be still uh, secretive and i think there's there's power in that but where possible we come together as one voice for the planet and for nature and for the animals because we're we are part of that system we talk about being guardians of these creatures but it, we're doing a very piss poor job if that's if that's the truth whereas we're just part of this nature this this planet and we have two bigger egos and it's not it's not right <sighs> anyway uh what are some of the favorite tools that you use regularly a wooden spoon <laughs> my garden tools um my tarot is is like the and my tarot my oracles I don't know if you, they're, they're tools, they're tools for divination. I use my tarot and my oracles for the evolution of my, my being, my soul. I don't know what really I believe in at the moment. I certainly don't believe in a heaven where we're all sat up there and, and having a jolly party. Um, I hope that I can retain through my soul um, what I learn and i love working with tarot i i i stopped buying lots and lots of tarot. i've been a bit naughty and i had a few decks and asked for a few decks and been spoiled i i love them and i'm clustering them together at the moment because i want to use so many of them and i have been really bad at reading my books i've been reading a lot of fiction witchcraft rather than um the more um practical stuff uh, I use I use incense. I like to make my own through the garden. I use what else do I use? Uh, when you say tools, I I'm I'm starting to work with runes. I use pendulums. Um, what else do I use? Well, it yeah, it's kind of. A wooden spoon it's a cauldron or saucepans uh, anything and everything is kind of on the table for me uh, what was it yeah I picked up these um, I don't know if I can reach it it's they're like uh, so they're sewing um, things but I can use those for my witchcraft. I picked up all these little spoons that I use for different witchy stuff. So, yeah, kind of anything, anything I find, I think, oh, that would be useful. And my husband sometimes looks at me and, and he says, you're just in another world, aren't you? And I am. And I'll put my hand in my pocket and I'll find seed in there because I'll... I, I, if I go walking, I like to give the birds some seed, or if I go into the garden, um, I use feathers. Um, I use my plants. So, yeah. What books or resources would you recommend for newbie witches interested in? Oh, I thought I'd answered that. What books or resources have you first started working with? Ah, well, I kind of switched those around a bit. So, I can't, I'm going to lump those two together because the books and resources that I started with 
were whatever books were recommended and that's what I mean is you you're probably going to have to try loads of different ones and as I said the recommendations would be that you maybe pick a specific thing that you're interested in you know some people like to work with spirit it's not something I've really done. There's three books in my Amazon basket, in case my husband watches it, <laughs> on uh, ancestral work because Tarot Tats and Tea, I can't remember her name, she's done a lovely video on working with Ancestra and I really liked the idea of doing that. I have an ancestral altar that you can see a little bit of. Um, I'm starting to use Murder of the Crows as my ancestral reading deck. Um, so again, if you like something specific, I like the Ted Andrews Animal Speak. If you want to work with more uh, animals or, or be able to tune in to, to their vibe, you might try that. Oh, another tool I found. There was a dead magpie in the garden a few years, was it yeah, last year? It must have been last year. And I did bring it home and I did dismantle it and I buried the skull and I have a lovely skull. Well, that's a kind of tool for me for ancestral work or working with um, the spirit of animals. So you can use pretty much anything as a tool. Books from the beginning, I would say, I just, just read across the board. Study, practice, if you're, I don't know that there are many witches that come into it that are not passionate from the minute they get from the get go and they just want to to be immersed in it. Um, and for the youngsters, hopefully you have to do the study. You know, it, it's it's not all how how it looks. It's got to be rooted in practice learning studying the respect that goes for the planet and nature and everything and for each other as i said in one of my other videos which i haven't uploaded yet because my laptop has decided to upgrade my video system and i don't know what that means because i'm really very not techy at all um so who knows when this video is going to go up but um i forgot what i was going to say now I was saying that Yule to me is a very all-encompassing time. Pagan rituals are very all-encompassing. Whereas, sadly, and I'm not trying to knock Christianity. I'm, I came away from it. It's got its place for people. That's absolutely fine. But there are a lot of lonely people in the Christmas, or over Christmas, that I don't feel necessarily would feel so lonely if they were celebrating Yule, in my opinion. Just saying. Anyway, this video is now nearly an hour and I need to stop. So I've done the tag, I've done the, 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 the answers. You may not agree with everything I have to say. My craft is mine and it's personal to me. I'm learning all the time. I learn from the youngsters. I learn from those of my own age and the seniors above me. I am a perpetual student and I humbly walk this earth with, with reverence to everything. The blade of grass, the beautiful moss, um, Uh, if you stay to the end of my waffling, I'm very, very grateful and thank you so much for taking that time to sit with me and uh, many blessings to you as we adventure towards Yule. I hope you have a lovely celebration, whatever you're doing, and uh, many thanks for staying with me. Your comments are always welcome and I hope that... Um, if you have any recommendations, bookwise or other, you would happily share them. Okay, take care. Bye.